Hi there. In this video, we're going to look at how to replace the bearings in a Siemens IQ700 washing machine. In this case, uh, the seal in the back of the washing machine, which protects the bearings, stops them from getting uh, sort of corroded in any way. That has allowed moisture, that has degraded and allowed moisture to come in. Uh, and that's typically what happens, especially in these type of machines. Uh, moisture gets into the, the area where the bearings are. Uh, that then corrodes the races, they become rusty, and that's where you get your grinding noise that you're probably experiencing uh, during your mine's main cycle, and especially during the spin, which is when the bearings are under their, their highest stress. So let's get right into it and get these bearings replaced. Okay, so here I am removing the screws from the top of the washing machine to gain access to the inside. Very straightforward. Move the top of the washing machine, and now I'm removing the screws from the rear to remove the other main access panel. Certainly is a lot faster in fast forward. Okay, main access panel from the rear is now removed, and now I'm going to remove the drive belt between the motor and the flywheel at the rear of the drum. Very simple to do, just with your fingers. Out comes the soap tray, just press down on the lever in the middle. And you'll see there that I have put some washing up liquid onto a screwdriver just to help it slide in and remove the retaining ring around the rubber uh, seal between the drum and the front access door of the washing machine. A bit of washing up liquid does help uh, avoid any damage to that rubber seal. And then fold the rubber seal into the drum Okay, so this is the top front of the washing machine, and I, uh, here I am uh, removing the clips to the soap feed between the soap drawer and the drum. Now I'm removing the screws on the front panel, the control panel with all the electronics. And uh, now I did get caught out on this little. Um, on that little clip on the side, that actually slides up rather than come forward, so um, be careful with that. Move the remaining screws and the front panel should come off. Uh, just need to disconnect the electrical connectors and there it goes. Okay, now I'm removing the screws, it's a little hard to see, but the screws on the, uh, the front plinth panel at the bottom of the front of the washing machine four screws and it comes off and then you can remove the screws that retain the front um, panel including the door which is what I'm doing there and then it lifts off the front and just before it does you need to remove the lock which is just a case of pressing in the two lugs and that pops back and then you can lift the front panel with the door off the front of the washing machine okay so there we go Now I'm removing the rubber seal all together from the front of the drum. And here I'm just removing the clip which holds on the, the brains of the electronics um, and also is used as a hook to hold the front panel in place. Now we can remove the screws which hold, the, sorry, the nuts which hold the uh, concrete block on the top. Disconnecting the clips from the feed tubes to the soap drawer, these are the water feed tubes. And then remove, release the water, uh, the soap drawer, sorry. And the final um, area to release is this rubber uh, clip, this clip for the rubber rather, um, which I think is from the soap feed dish to the main drum. And out it comes. Okay, so the electronics assembly just needs unclipping, and then you can just hang that on the back of the uh, back of the machine or over the top. Yeah, I'm just removing the uh, uh, another clip with. I'm not quite sure what that item was, but uh, it kind of fed down the rear side of the machine. So just releasing that.
and some more wires to uh, release, which feed into the motor. Now the motor itself needs to be removed, it's just um, a couple of bolts. It slides right off the back. Quite heavy, be careful. And now let's remove the heating element and just unscrew that nut in the sensor almost all the way, bang it in, and that should then give you a bit of space to remove the heating element itself, which as you can see is covered with quite a bit of lime scale. And they are removing the retaining bolt for one of the shock absorbers. And the second bolt to remove the shock absorber completely. A, uh, a brace across the a horizontal brace across the rear of the front of the machine, just removing that and removing the other shock absorber at the front. And removing the uh, this is the filter, so you can see it's just four screws that hold that in place. release the drum off its springs and put it out of the frame. Now I'm going to remove, and I had to use quite a long extension on my socket set as you can see, uh, remove all of the retaining nuts all the way around the drum. It takes a little while, we sped it up to make it a little quicker for you. And then the drum just removes, and as you can see there's a rubber seal in the middle, there is no adhesive if this is the first time this has been done. Now the flywheel on the on the rear is quite flexible, so you do need to be careful on how you lock it in place. I actually bent the flywheel, um, so do be careful with that, and then use a big wrench to get it off. You might need a, a hammer. Now I'm just knocking out the, the races from the rear of the drum. Just takes a bit of knocking around, and uh, obviously supports it on some nice softwood to save any damage to the drum itself. Just gently does it, and you will get the ball races out. No more banging. <laughs> there you are. There's one seal and one bearing. There are two bearings. And the other one had already been removed. So that's the new bearing, just offering it up for a uh, fit, which looks good. And in fact you can press that a good way in just with uh, a bit of hand and a little gentle little tap just around the edge, obviously not on the centre, you don't want to damage the races. This is the other bearing going in the centre, uh, in the inside section if you like, and that just again just presses in with a bit of finger pressure. Now, this is how I made the tool in order to get the bearings fully seated. So what I've done is I've got a, a pretty substantial threaded rod. You'll notice I've put three bolts on there, that's so you get a nice clean finish, you don't um, mess up the threads where you cut the uh, cut the rod. Just flattening it off there. And then that will allow you to make yourself uh, a steel rod of the appropriate length, and you will need to be very careful with the washers that you select, that they are just uh, big enough to pull the ball, uh, the bearings in, but not so big that they um, actually are too large for the hole that the bearings are going into, so they need to be just seated on the outside part of the ball, and as you can see it's just the right size there, just about a millimetre of extra space. Bit of washing up liquid on the seal, and the seal gets pressed in on the inside, and just putting in a bit of lubricant on the inside of that seal too, just so it slides easily over the actual drum shaft itself. And the flywheel goes on, check it's not bent. I didn't, I had to take the flywheel off again after refitting, so do be careful. And then tighten it up as hard as you can without locking, and then lock it in place and put it up to the specified torque. Check it flows freely, the turns freely, and then put a decent amount. Don't underdo it, but equally be careful of overdoing it. If you overdo it, there'll be a huge chunk of silicone on the inside, which obviously you can't access. 
uh, and actually I did have that, I did overdo it. That will come out through the filter, uh, but obviously it makes quite a noise and, and if you're doing this for the customer you wouldn't want to be called back to the job. So don't overdo this, um, but just be just be careful effectively. Okay, And that's a new rubber seal I'm putting in there. And the remaining half goes over. And then you have to screw up all the screws. Kind of if you've done it, if you've ever done a cylinder head uh, on a car, you'll know to evenly tighten those up. And that's kind of what this is. You start at one end, go to the opposite end, and then work your way around in a gentle way, doing each one up a little bit more each time until they're all done up to a nice tight uh, fixing. And then hooking it back in onto the springs to uh, hold the drum in place. And then the shock absorber starts to go in. So much quicker watching it at the speed, I have to say. And then the other shock absorber, and then as you can see down the front right up there, that's the uh, the filter which I'm fixing in place. And that's also the filter, just checking it's all nice and clean. It's being fitted onto the drum. And that's a shock absorber down the rear of the drum. Pass it straight forward. And the motor getting fixed in place, just the two screws holding that in place. And now this part, which I wasn't quite sure what it was, but um, that needs to go back in. Took a little bit of fiddling around this one, but it's fairly uh, intuitive where it needs to go. I would say take photos as you go of anything where you're not sure how it's going to be refitted. Certainly for the heating element, I certainly took photos of all the wiring around that area. And uh, just to... Uh, remind myself of which bits went where. It's again it's been cleaned up a bit, I soaked that in Calgon while it was out of the machine and then just uh, gently tap it in, screw in the central bolt and you're good to go. And the wiring loom is getting relined up, and plugged in. Again quite you need to be quite careful with the detail of this but it's not too onerous to get that fixed back in. I did have to use a couple of extra um, cable ties uh, because a couple of them did have to be cut when removing and as you can see I'm referring to my mobile phone on how to fix that in. Get the wires onto the motor and then the front and top wiring loom gets fitted back in, clip that in place at the front. This was quite fiddly this bit. And then the side. And putting in the uh, sliding nuts for the uh, the weight, the concrete weight to go back on the top of the machine. Another cup of tea on the way. There it is. Oh, and I should mention that the uh, silicone that I put in around the drum when refitting the two plastic halves, I left that to set overnight just to make sure that was properly set before getting it anywhere near water. Okay. Also worth noting that the uh, concrete weight on the front of the drum, you can see it on the front left, does not remove from the drum. Okay. Uh, I don't know about other washing machines, but this one certainly it does not remove. This is an integrated one. They've been minimal with the weights on this one and that one is uh, actually welded to the drum itself despite the the nuts which make it look the nut holes rather which make it look like it's held on with fixings it is not so then we're just fixing in the uh, soap drawer and the wiring loom and the plumbing for it as well There. and now the rubber seal going back on the front of the drum nice bit of washing up liquid just to help it slip in place this bit was fairly straightforward but getting the wire um, uh, sort of, uh, circular uh, fixing element 
onto it after I'd fixed this in place was tricky. Um, just wait till we get to that section. And that's the feed from the soap box just getting fit, fitted on. Fold it back in, tuck it back into the front. And this is the wire element that I did have, really struggle with this, but the way to get that on I found was to just gently ease it around. Again, if you've ever done a motorcycle tyre, you'll know to just gently, gently ease it. That's that's kind of the way to do that. Uh, the front brace back on. And not quite sure what I'm doing there. Let's double check that that's all fitted tightly. And that's the emergency door open, that little black bit of plastic point poking down on the right hand side, so be careful with that, make sure that's accessible from the front once you've fixed everything else back on. Another front panel with the door, yeah, get the lock in place first, get the fixings on for the panel. There we go, just checking the emergency open. And then the front control panel with all the electronics goes back on. And I found that I'd put a screw in a bit too soon. There we go. It does clip in as well, there are a couple of plastic clips on that control panel. lined up correctly. And the plinth getting fitted back on. And uh, that's the um, feed from the soap drawer. Get the soap drawer back in. Again, slide that left hand front plinth on gently. Get the flywheel back with the um, the rubber drive belt. Like I say, I had a couple of extra plastic clips just to tie the wiring up. And took the door off, which I probably should have done previously, actually, in retrospect. And this is the wire, sorry, this is the wire that I really struggled with. The, the previous one wasn't so bad. But again, I just had to ease this on, ease it on. And as you can see, it took a few goes, but a yeah, bit of washing up liquid, and then it's a good job. Front door back on. And that was the job complete, ready for testing, aside from putting the top panel back on. And I just tested it with the top panel and the rear panel off, just in case there was anything I'd missed. And there was, in fact, as I say, there was the um, flywheel at the rear which had been bent. And I was able to just bend that slightly to get it back into line. It certainly yeah. sounds a bit quieter, doesn't it? Positive <coughs> feedback from the customer. <laughs> And we're done. Thank you for watching. Hope this was some help.